I think the the common limiting belief amongst creators when thinking about brand deals is I'm too small. My audience is too small. Is there any validity to that idea? And is there a threshold you would encourage people to think about? It's very much platform specific, I would say. Like if you are trying to go after brands who view, let's say, Instagram as their primary, you know, platform that they're they're themselves posting on. They're working with a bunch of other creators on that platform who are all at a similar level, then yeah, of course. Like you're, it's gonna be very brand and platform specific based on that advertiser. But there are also lots of other ways that you can bring value to a brand, regardless of how many followers you have. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel called How to Get Sub uh, Sponsorships with Zero Followers. You probably think this is clickbait, right? Is it really possible to get brand deals with zero followers? Of course it is. Let me tell you five ways to do it. Number one, stop thinking that the only reason a brand would wanna partner with you is because of how many followers you have. Sure, there are some brands like that who say, oh, you know, you need a minimum of 10,000 followers to work with us. Fine, that's not the right brand for you. There are tons of brands out there where the whole the whole point of the campaign is to use your content on their social media platforms. There are even entire sites set up like Tidal that facilitate these types of deals. So starting now, stop obsessing over how many followers you have and start obsessing over how your platform can serve as your portfolio. I wanted to illustrate that there is that your expertise, the things that are banging around up in your brain around how to have a robust presence, an effective presence on social media, do not require you to have 100,000 subscribers, right? So for example, let's say that you have a dream brand. Maybe you have a couple thousand followers on Instagram or YouTube or you know whatever. And you have this dream brand that you are, you just love their story. And you look at their Instagram, you look at their TikTok, you look at their YouTube, and it sucks. <laughs> They're not posting there frequently. The quality of the content is not great. They're not doing a good job telling the brand story, which you know, because you love the brand, right? I'm sure you can think of a couple brands in your head, Jay, that like you think of that, right? It's just like, I, I, man, I, I, could, I could be such a great advocate for their brand if they would just let me, right? And so the pitch that when you reach out to that brand is not, hey, I'm gonna talk about, you know, your brand on at Jay Klaus, <laughs> my Instagram or whatever. That's not my pitch. The pitch is, hey, let me tell your brand story for you and you will utilize that content on your platforms or you will utilize it for, paid advertising, right? And so, you, you know, posting on your platforms or in your newsletter sponsorship, that can still be part of the proposal, but the whole point of it is not about leveraging your organic reach or distribution on your page, right? It's about how you can help them tell an effective brand story in a way that would be very difficult for either them to do it themselves or for them to hire a production company who is quite detached from their story, who better than to do it than you? And so like, that's just like a very simple example of like how you can get paid a lot of money, by the way, because now you're saying, hey, I'm gonna do this for you. Yeah, it's gonna be $5,000 a month because it doesn't matter how many followers you have at that point, because that's not the thrust of your proposal. I love that. And I wanna double click on it because I think that's a really important distinction that people don't understand. Like th there's a spectrum of brand deals. And I'm saying that mirroring what you're saying, because I think I have a very, limited view of what a brand deal encompasses. To me, it's, hey, here's some money creator, post about us on your story, in your post, you have to make this many posts and that is what this looks like. But it sounds like you're talking about a much broader spectrum of possible collaboration types, designs for creators. Can you elaborate on what some of those other types of brand deals could look like? Let's say, for example, I'm in your uh, Creative Companion Club, just to give you a little plug there. And here's a pitch that you can make to Circle. You say, hey, Circle, I don't know if they have a TikTok, by the way, but you could you could say, hey, TikTok, uh, Circle, I noticed you don't have a TikTok presence. Let me make a series of TikToks for you talking about how I'm using Circle for my community. And this is not going to live on at Jay Klaus. This is going to live on at Circle SO or whatever on, on your TikTok. And so here you are, you're basically doing a takeover. You're helping them grow their thing. It's a real customer of theirs. And what, like, how freaking cool is that? To me, that's, that's a sponsorship. That's a brand deal. And like how thrilled will they get about it? Because now basically what you're telling to them is you're, you're saying to them that I'm going to rely, me, Jay Klaus, I'm going to rely on my expertise in growing community, in you know creating compelling content. I'm going to help you tackle this new platform that I think 
is going to be important for the growth of your business, uh, but you're not doing anything about it right now, I'm going to help you. I'm ba You're basically a consultant at that point. You're. I have this saying, like, you're not just a creator, you're a consultant because you're going into their business, you're identifying gaps in how you think they, you know, gaps in their marketing strategy, and you're pitching them on something. I, you should do that pitch, by the way, Jay, like if, if, you, if you haven't already, <laughs> like, or anyone listening, I'm sure there's like an infinite variation of, of that idea. Yeah, I love that because you're you're expanding beyond I'm creating content about this sponsor for my channel to I'm creating content for the sponsor for their channel. And man, I actually had a conversation with a brand last week who I probably shouldn't name on the air, but they're a big brand and they wanted <laughs> name me, them, name them, okay, name them. <laughs> um, they they wanted to license some of my course content and they wanted to bring me in to talk with their users. And I was just like, whoa. And then she was telling me about how in the past they've custom built courses by hiring a four person agency to come in and produce the course. And the dollar signs just ringing in my head of like, that sounds incredibly expensive, so much more expensive than licensing my content and paying to bring me in. And these brands are doing this type of thing all the time. They're, they're hiring people to create this content agencies who are paying an entire staff so their rates are a lot higher and just never crossed my mind that that is uh, an opportunity for creators to work with brands. There's this this idea called your BATNA, which is your best alternative to a negotiated agreement, okay? Basically, it's like if this brand, who just like you said, who's reaching out to you, weren't going to hire you, weren't going to license your course con content, what are their alternatives, right? They've got to go out there and hire this agency or hire a production company, hire actors or actresses to star in that content, right? They have to, and then by the way, when they pay the editor to make the content, then they have to go pay Facebook, Instagram, YouTube to serve the ad, <laughs> right? So it's just like, there's so much money that goes into that process. And I'm not saying that that's what you should lead with in your proposal. Like I'm so much cheaper than these other alternatives. That's not it. What I'm saying is that this is where if you put yourself in their shoes and be like, okay, if I'm the brand, if they don't work with me, where are they going to go? Yeah, maybe other creators or yeah, maybe they're going to go hire an agency. But it's just like in your situation, and that thing you just mentioned, Jay, is that you're not just a actor. You have credibility when it comes to community. And right? And growing an audience and things like that. So it's like, that is, as the, in the MasterCard commercials like to say, that's priceless. <laughs> it's very hard to hire. So not only do you have amazing production quality, but you've got this authority in this particular space. So like, I, I think that too many creators minimize their own expertise and because they just think that the only reason they're commoditized, they think, oh, well, they don't work with me. I got to lower my rate because, you know, if I don't, if I don't meet their budget, then they're going to go work with someone else. And, you, you know, a lot of this comes down to having the confidence to realize that, no, you actually have something very potent and you should not be backing down here. You should be standing your ground. I think creators also underestimate the investment these people are putting in the process of vetting or trying to hire you, you know, to the creator, like you get this drive by opportunity sometimes of, Hey, we want to collaborate with you on this campaign and you reach out to them and you name your number and maybe you don't hear back from them, but you're probably underestimating how painful it would be for them to say, you know what, actually we got to go with somebody else because they might've already talked to their boss about you. They might've pitched you specifically. It's just like hiring somebody. Sometimes you get so deep down the hiring process and they start negotiating with their salary. It's more painful to kill that process entirely, find a new candidate, and then have the same conversation again where you might get into the same negotiation again rather than say, you know what, this is a little higher than what I was looking for, but I can't not work with this person, so we're going to do it. There are so many other reasons why a brand would decide to pay you a higher rate than perhaps someone at a commensurate following or commensurate influence is charging that have nothing to do with what you think it does, right? So you're in your mind, you're fixated on your numbers. Oh, my open rates or my click rates or my followers or my impressions or whatever. That's because that's the world we all live in as creators. It's like, that's how we measure our, the success of ourselves, right? But when, a, when it comes to a brand, like there's all these intangible <laughs> qualities to partners that they're not going to tell you about, but it's reality. So if you're the person who is responding to every email they send in six hours versus two or three days, you're the person who doesn't give them a bunch of flack when they're asking for a few edits on a video or to the copy on a newsletter ad or something like that. You're the person who, when, if this is an agency, the brand comes back and says like, hey, I know we didn't have this in the creative brief when we have reached out, but there's this new requirement that we have to have in this sponsorship. I understand that it wasn't part 
of it. And you're the person who is like, yeah, no, no big deal. Let's, let's make it, it'll take me like five minutes. I'll do a quick new voiceover. Like you underestimate how valuable that is because if they're working with 20 other creators, and believe me, I've worked with thousands of creators in my day, uh, a lot of whom are divos or divas about it. I'm just sorry, there's reality that, you know, it's just been like pulling, you know, it's like just like pulling teeth to get every single thing from them for to make actually this campaign happen. If you're the person who is just like absolutely easy to work with, what happens? Not only do you make that your contact at the brand of the agency look like a hero, but chances are that person's going to move on to another job in two years because that's what happens in this industry. Everyone moves around all the time, right? And so when chances are, they're probably going to work at a similar brand or similar agency. And when they start running, you know, create campaigns with creators and partners, they're going to remember you and they're going to reach back out and be like, hey, I moved on to this new agency, loved working with you at this last brand, uh, you know, let's do it again. And so 50, 60, probably 70% now of the deals that my wife and I are doing on an ongoing basis are from exactly that. It's this Rolodex and these this trail of amazing relationships that we built over the last decade. And yeah, our influence has massively waned in terms of our top level impressions and, and metrics and all that stuff, viewership. But we've made the most money that we've ever made every single year since then, right? So it, like this, 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 yeah, this is it's just a complete misnomer that you have to just like stay on this content hamster wheel and constantly, you know, have the same performance year after year after year. 